Good morning, folks. The videos and photos are making their way around the net. Huge lights seen from Vegas to San Diego. It's being called a UFO, a comet, Project Blue Beam. But in reality, this is what rockets look like at night, hitting different layers of the atmosphere and firing different stages of the rocket. In this case, it's actually a missile test done by the United States Navy. So, folks, as we watch some solar tornadoes dance onto the Earth-facing disk, we look back on potential effects from the recent solar storm. First of all, if you called your TV company about a problem yesterday, they may have blamed the solar storm. About half of them were. There were also multiple aircraft incidents that could be related, along with some power outage candidates. The storm only hit level 2 and is waning now. The solar wind speed remains high due to a concurrent coronal hole stream, but it too is waning. Let's look at the last 24 hours on our star and see that it reveals another calm day. After the one hiccup that Earth-facing solar quiet learned its place, we did have a small but beautiful release on the northwest departing limb. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we find solar flaring offering some minor sea flares, but nothing major. We do still have one group departing, and those two incoming north and south. The southern grouping has magnetic mixing potential at the trailing negative umbra. In other space weather news, a gamma ray burst screamed in from the southern skies middle of yesterday. We're still looking ahead to Mercury conjoining the sun in less than 10 days. It will re-raise the now fallen earthquake watch when the next coronal hole comes in with it. You'll recall this one faced Earth yesterday during the Chile quake, another little southern bit coming in now. Although it wasn't major or even reported by any agencies, a tiny tsunami may have been generated by that Chile earthquake. Wouldn't have even been noticeable, however. We also want to mention the minor perturbations here. Outgoing long-wave radiation suggests we look at this region near Sumatra, along with Japan, and south of recent Chile disasters for another earthquake. In fact, while I pieced this news together this morning, a moderate shake struck one of those areas just before 5 a.m. Eastern Time. Top news articles today begin with a Mars Aurora piece out of the ESA. Advanced heliophysics enthusiasts will find the field structures mirror coronal holes on the sun. Then we come to NASA's Earth Observatory for a before and after of a huge landslide in Burma, thousands displaced. We've still got the one cyclone tracking towards Yemen again, but the other storm intensified and will soon hit the Indian subcontinent. How about those temperature swings that came with the climate extremes event in the US? High pressure now dominates the landscape, with rain coming around the periphery. Over in Europe, we see the low nodes in the north, big or small, that's where the weather will be relevant for locals here. Down under, we find low pressure in northern Australia, and you'll also see the precipitation sticking around those areas as well. Folks, yesterday's episode of Fly on the Wall was a solid review of current space weather conditions, followed by a fascinating trek through some interesting topics that included multiverse, climate, and the Global Consciousness Project. You can find Fly on the Wall under premium at suspiciousobservers.org, along with other members' content, including the Humans and EM section, which details the effect of space energy and more on the human body. Please consider a membership. It's hundreds of hours of content for the price of one Blu-ray movie. Suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.